Hi everyone, I hope you're well. Good to be back with some Scottish whiskies this time. We're in Northern Highlands. I'm gonna explain this to you in a moment, present you the distillery quickly, uh, and then uh, go to the tastings. Five Ball Blair of my collection we're gonna try today. I know these are not currently uh, the core range uh, for sure. I haven't, I'm sorry, I haven't tried a core range yet. I've yet to try them. I was a bit reluctant because I love so much the previous packaging. Very colorful, uh, as I'm a painter, I'm uh, necessarily sensitive a bit more to this. Even if the landscape is a bit blurry, it still has something related to uh, the highlands. Plus, we'll see some of the packaging have more details about local things. Uh, so yeah, I'm not a fan of the new trend uh, doing things grayish, anonymous almost, and just putting the big letters of the distillery and that's all. Like, unfortunately, two distilleries of the same group, uh, Thai Beverage, uh, through uh, the subsidiary um, in the house distillers, so Balbler and Old Paltney did the same thing, get rid of a fancy, nice, old-school packaging to get something more modern. Another question maybe we'll, we'll evoke in a video about design. Uh, that would be, I think, a good idea, maybe with a guest as well on live, I don't know. have an idea of who <laughs> uh, could be there. Now, uh, I have started the overview already, mind you, for those who are in Instagram or following my Instagram, uh, Greg's Whiskey Guide, uh, you can find uh, five tasting notes of samples I've had from um, a compatriot called Chris, and uh, that you may rather know as Calderac. Uh, so we had swapped and offered samples over the years, and uh, three years ago, I have a set of samples. I have basically an old 10 years old from the late 80s or early 90s. Uh, two seven, 1979 vintages, one from Gordon McPhail, one official one, and a vintage 1983. So you can find all these notes on um, uh, on my Instagram in English, yes. And uh, if you have if you're following Scotch Down under Discord uh, and um, New Drum Drinkers Discord, you can also find my notes there. I, I did uh, capture for them. Right, Bad Blair Distillery. First off, I know you might not be able to see the map very well, but it's. Oh, I'm not sure I'm going to manage this. It's there, Northern Highlands. Uh, so quite. Uh, cold climate sometimes so where is it and I almost lost it there you can see I had the chance to visit the distillery in 2018 I will put a link below in the description of the uh, report of the visit of this distillery and of five others I did in uh, in Scotland in 2018 there you can see where it is located quite close to uh, Glenmorangie, yeah, focus, I should not move so much, I'm sorry, anyway, oh, I have to stop some, okay, right, I'm, okay, I'm back, sorry for the interruption, I uh, have a delivery, but it was not whiskey, mind you, but a music record, because I love music, there I think you might be able to see a bit better, so it's uh, in uh, the, uh, we're uh, in the Morifith, as they say. Um, also, maybe be while I present the distillery, I might uh, let this view, which might remind me something to you if you have seen uh, the movie The Angel Share, uh, which one of the distilleries which were uh, featured in there was uh, Bal Blair, especially uh, the outside and one of the warehouses, but there were other distilleries implies. So, uh, a bit of history first. 
quickly to present your distillery then a very quick overview because there's a lots of things on my website and uh, also uh, a bit of uh, some versions some whiskies of uh, Bald Blair in my website and mentioned in my YouTube channel as well excuse me <coughs> yeah so i'm gonna go uh hope it doesn't cut things on my uh website to uh also there you go my visit i did a full report that i, I translated myself in english my website so you can have pictures you can have text uh, and you can have a lot of things explaining uh to you uh, my trip to Scotland in 2018 and to Balbler Distillery in particular. It's very long so I have to browse a bit. Uh, there you go, September. Oh, September. Yeah, it was in September. Okay, September 2018. So Distillery founded in 1790. But the tour guide told us that it did exist before, already in 1749. Hard to verify uh, records-wise. I could, I haven't, I'm sorry, I haven't double-checked it in, uh, for instance, in the Barnard, Alfred Barnard book. I could have double-checked, but I, I didn't really think of it. I know uh, there, is, there was another distillery called Balbler in Black Isle, but it doesn't seem to be the same. So we're going to uh, assume it is 1790, still is one of the first official, let's say, one, even if we had to wait 1823 for Glenlivet, first licensed distillery by King George IV. So Balbler uh, did uh, had as an owner uh, Inverhouse Distillers, which is a group of uh, gathers a group of distilleries. Uh, then it was absorbed by the Thai beverage. So they have now Balmenach Nochtu, which makes the Anok, Old Pultney, and Speyburn. Uh, it also enters uh, for 90% uh, at, at the time of the visit, maybe less now, uh, to Cato's, MacArthur's and Hanky Bannister blended whiskies. Uh, it, only the Hanky Bannister can be found from time to time in France. I'm not sure any of you, if you're not really uh, geeks, uh, you know the, for those brands. Probably more the Cato's and MacArthur if, if you're in UK. Anyway, um, it's a distillery which, as many unfortunately in Scotland, stopped doing uh, floor malting uh, locally uh, in the 70s, late 60s or 70s for this one. Um, the malted barley comes from Inverness though, which is not far, beautiful city. Variety they use nowadays is Concerto, as many, and Chronicle mix. Uh, the yeast is not liquid yeast, a bit industrial, let's say, for uh, the majority of these trees, but the powder special one, which they say it's the most natural possible. It's what they say. Um, the wash uh, well, uh, mashing is done in, in a semi louter mash tun, so a partial uh, rotation of the inner uh, system, the pal in French, 4.4 tons of capacity. Uh, yeah, so it doesn't turn completely. Uh, three th 360. They have six uh, pi in Oregon pine washbacks uh, of uh, 23,000 uh, liters each. Now the duration of the fermentation is was said 72 hours, uh, but in a guide of their French distributor La Maison du Whisky in an old um, book uh, they mentioned 55 to 96 hours so i don't know um, they have two stills only one wash one spirit uh, where is it yep so uh, the wash still is uh, 19 a uh, 19 000 
93 liters and the spirit still is 11 zero forty four liters uh, middle cut one hour and a half to two hours so eighty percent to sixty three percent ABV ninety five percent of what they do uh, use uh, cask wise is bourbon cask and the rest is sherry cask uh, yeah the single malt part is ten percent uh, capacity of production is now one point eight million of liters of pure alcohol alcohol sorry per annum um, what else can I say and yeah when I was on site there explained me that in fact they have 10 uh, warehouses by the way they had in uh, 2018 23,000 casks uh of capacity uh in the where in their warehouses sorry but they have only stored 19,000. so they state it's very interesting because not many distillery do that they state they only use first fill and second fill whether it's sherry or bourbon first fill and second fill casks only so it means those whiskies didn't have except from of course uh, ex sherry wine or fortified wine or uh, ex bourbon whiskey whiskey uh, from the america they didn't have anything else and uh, whiskey was only uh, dropped in there uh, poured in in the cask one time or two times so it means they're quite active cask and quite flavorful cask that said, uh, we will see that shortly the distillate is still, I think, uh, quite talkative. Uh, the enfuitage in French, so the uh, ABV of um, filling cask is 69%, which is higher than the national Scottish average uh, ABV. And of the norm, which is since uh, the early 20 uh, for exchanging distillates between distilleries and f provide for blenders is 63.5 mind you so 69 is quite high my guess is probably as they have a lot of dunnage warehouses not all but oh no they're all uh, okay uh, all dunnage I, I see that now on my text uh, so it's to avoid losing too much uh, too much alcohol content and they say if they have now automatized also the filling so now it's only uh, they need only 40 seconds to fill the cask instead of uh, five minutes or so uh, something like that um, so when they use bourbon cask they m come most of the time uh, from buffalo trays so they use american and european oak uh, they use a lot of uh, 600 liters of butts and stuff like that especially for sherry uh, yeah the rest i uh, i think it's not in more interesting than that what uh, did I ask? Yeah, there was a, a bottle of, of of your own bottle your own, but I didn't. I tried it; it was nice, but I didn't bought it, as I was other. Uh, I was targeting other things. Right. Uh, I've tried. I've tried so far forty three. I d double checked before doing the video. Forty three different expressions. Of Balblair, of course, I'm not gonna uh, tell you <laughs> all about them now. But um, there's my favorite Bal Balblair, if you ask me, and I have to uh, look down to my 2005 La Maison du Whisky catalog. Yeah, uh, my archives have some something <laughs> interesting. And the first bottle we're going to try, it's from the around 2005-2006. It's a noise statement, a creations of the elements. Going to see that in a minute, but why I show you this? Because the packaging prior to this one, which has already changed, I know, uh, the vintage uh, packaging. So prior to that, it was that kind of uh, old school 
partly seal screen, partly with the uh, paper label. And you can see the beautiful 16 and 10 years old, which has been dropped, unfortunately, when there was the rebranding. And uh, also you can see my favorite Bal Blair, which I rated 96, if I'm not mistaken. 96 to more. Uh, and it's the 38 years old, you can see there. It's stunning whiskey. It's a 1966 vintage. Uh, and it's uh, it was presented Whiskey Life Paris 2005. At that time it was 149 euros and then quickly 269. I've recently, I've today checked and it retails now between 2600 and somewhere at 7500. Uh, crazy crazy price uh, so yeah so there you have it not gonna be longer than that and yeah also I might show you this before I start uh, they uh, this is the bottle your own they had and uh, you can see uh, some views also on the little leaflet they give you there problem is you were not allowed to take pictures except at the visitor center main rooms uh, outside of course and then uh, the warehouse uh, we were allowed to take pictures in the warehouse uh, I brought back I'm not going to show you now but a beautiful dropper uh, it, it isn't uh, the, the tube is very cool but it, it isn't well, I'm going to show you quickly it isn't unfortunately branded so I don't remember which brand it is, but you see it's beautiful with a shape like dropper. So basically there's a hole here. You uh, fill it uh, with water and then you, oh, you cannot see, sorry. So you fill it with water. Uh, um, then when you will drop into your glass, you will release this and uh, as much as you want of it so beautiful dropper they sell there i know this one you can find in the us uh scott and bart of uh Sc scotch test dummies use it uh, a lot you can also of course find it elsewhere in uh scotland but i thought it was a cool souvenir to bring back here right hope i'm still okay sound wise uh talking about now yeah i had to the cork is a silicone new one because uh, i have this for uh how much time do i have this for 2006 18 euros instead of uh, 20 and 29 it was the bargain at the la maison de whiskey i know uh, ancient days um this one uh we don't know the cask type involved i couldn't find it but uh more likely to be bourbon maybe a touch of sherry um, so this one is called the creation of the elements what i absolutely love in there is the uh distillery scenery silk screened or gold in gold in in the in the sure you can uh, reflections are a bit painful with these cameras and light uh, but yeah there you have it it's a no -age statement they don't uh, say if it is uh, yeah you have some code they don't say if it's uh, chill filtered and colored but it's more likely to be because you're gonna see some older uh, vintages which are lighter uh, this is 40% ABV, but let me tell you, it's one of the most beautiful 40%ers whiskies I ever tried. And you're going to see that uh, on the rating if I don't change it. I did open this uh, only last year, uh, in July of last year. Uh, so, yeah. Take a bit of water and we're going to start. 
so yeah i have four vintages in my collection and i have this you can see some golden color uh with gonna see yes yeah, not a whiskey it's a rum fest glass i'm sorry but the legs i don't know if you can see them but they're really sticking long and they're fat if there is chill filtration there come on it's a very light one if there is caramel there it's very symbolic but let me tell you this is tasty on the nose we are in ball blair with this one but a rich ball blair uh, a fruity ball blair uh, quite uh, rich dense ball blair but the nose already tells you you're in northern highlands with some kind of wild herbs uh, different kinds of uh, sweet spices let's say and this herbal slash floral slash citrus fruit slice uh, spices typical highlander profile you have it there and with those charming twist that this distillery has which is a little different from its neighbor Glenmorangie which I visited as well and you can see behind me a bit old bottlings as well <laughs> so beautiful nose let me see if uh, this is matching quite melted we we have uh, uh, lots of orchid fruit which are have been preserved in a, in a metallic can but you you cannot feel metal you don't feel the metallic side sometimes you can feel this in another highlander uh, distillery old Paltney, but both share this kind of uh, preserved or tinned uh, fruit not sure of the english term sorry so there's something vegetal but um, uh, there's something also fruity Mm, this is quite charming this is rich i have honey almost had the honey this is not so far from the old style of highland park 12 for instance at a certain extent there's something almost uh potpourri in terms of flowers of different kind of flowers it's peach apricot uh, lemon also some Earl Grey tea yeah the herbal side is subdued there we'll see how it works on the ballet Langeva. Mm, gorgeous balance here is near perfection between fruits flowers slight oak remember it's a f uh, didn't tell you but it's a five year said to be a five years old for a five years old it's already has some maturity not enough but uh, enough to shine let's say not enough to have a big depth but enough to entertain you and to have a decent and uh, moderately uh, of moderate uh, length uh, palette so it doesn't feel short doesn't feel diluted uh, really lovely the complexity in this is huge the finesse also uh, the, the subtlety the delicacy is also as well in terms of intensity i, I have this rating out of 10 uh, I, I can go up to almost nine so a, maybe eight and a half something like that and you're gonna see that even with a slight uh, water of course this will be better at 43 I guess but I'm re already satisfied with this Is something I struggle to define in Bald Blair, which is this intricate, intricate flavors of flowers, orchid fruit, sweet spices, herbal element, touch of green and tea, 
Uh, we're not so far from Glenmorangie. We're not so far from uh, Old Peltney. A bit more far from Kleinisch, except some beautiful old Kleinisch I've tried. This is less dry. Uh, this is a less um, oriented on spices and, um, and citrus fruit, let's say. This has less uh, structure as, as well, at least for this one. Uh, we will try it with a few drops. I've brought here my more precise dropper of brandy <laughs> that I take with me on shows. See, I nev almost never seen such sticky legs for a 40 percenter uh, whiskey, to be honest. Even when you look at the orchard house, the legs stay less long than this one. So quite a lot of fat in, in the whiskey remaining. Hmm, forgot to mention some caramel in the background. I mean, natural as I feel it. Caramel, malted barley, a bit. Well, uh, maybe some white chocolate, not sure. Slightly tiny nutty notes. I suspect there might be, say, 30% sherry cask in there. I'm not sure at all. But um, I don't think it's only bourbon in there because it has some seductive nuttiness and maltiness that sometimes belongs to refilled sherry cask. You lose some complexity with the water. Um, it's a bit less gourmet, but still delivering a nice uh, mix of flowers and, and, um, and fruits. I'm going to pause a second to see if I correct the rating and I'll be back. Okay, the rating for this one it might still evolve, mind you, is 87.5 subs really des decent especially for uh, even for 29 euros and for 18 it's total bargain should have bought three or four of this to be honest if i knew how good it was to i knew it because i tried it in the show but I, well anyway there was only one bargain so Okay, right, let's go now to the next one. And uh, yeah, I forgot to show you the tube. At that time, it was a, a metallic, kind of metallic tube. Well, cardboard and metal top. Um, this is also, no, it doesn't say in there, but I've read that there might have been some coloring. I'm not completely sure. Uh, if I check this uh, malt whiskey yearbook, uh, I needed to know. Yeah, so Thai beverage uh, Pacific Spirits takes over in 2001. And yeah, the 38 years old I told you about was launched in 2004. Uh, and year after, there's another holding, buying back Pacific UK, okay, as, um, 2006. Okay, so it's 2007 that the vintages replace the former core range. So 2007. So what this means is that I have not the inaugural... Uh, first release but the second one so 2008 most probably so it's an unofficial second release of uh, what age is that it's it's still 11 years old so the first vintage of the uh, yeah the first vintage of the of the core range and you're gonna see something that you know when they do big beautiful bottles like that they are thinking also of how it will appear on the shelf 
so uh, the external packaging the box or the tube also how much room it will take uh, it will take on on shelves on retailers shelves and for this first one or second release but first type of new vintage uh, bottling look at that big big squared I mean yeah the idea was to do this which you cannot do with this first packaging with you can do it with the next one you're gonna see that so for the first one this was taking a lot of room uh, if you see what they did go for afterwards let me show you the difference so see the next one so the 99 is smaller now well, let me show you like this is smaller and uh, more classical also the opening is different for the 1997 it's opening from the, the top see and there is even a leaflet that uh, intera in for interaction with them to uh, subscribe etc nice nice one that's inside the box also something that alas i think let me check i think disappeared afterwards yes it, it, it did disappear this one has magnets but we're gonna come come to it so this is a stylized landscape of course a bit blurry you're not sure it's the, the this uh more fifth coast but there was still something also if you can want to play to the differences the sticker with the name of the distillery the vintage etc is uh was uh on the downside of the box at that time while later on uh for the next releases it was on the top weird right uh, also but they look so great especially when you have uh, different colors other differences that were paying tribute to the pictish uh, the picts that were occupying northern highlands at that time disputing the place to uh, the celts so you can see a big standing stone which is in the domain uh, near the distillery there's another one also in uh, in the area close to uh, in, in uh, but it's a different one in Glamorangi so you can see uh, a tribute ancient plain on the ancient plain of Edar Dun sorry for the pronunciation great stone monument erected four millennia ago but a race now lost to history the Picts it took place in uh, Scottish history and imbued the stone with the myth and legend in the sacred uh, is it the sacred stone the oh my god Klach Biorach meaning sharp stone which has inspired Val Blair yes the Pictish symbols and ancient legends ageless of time of change are part of the essence of Val Blair blah 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 so this was selected by John MacDonald, uh, the, ma the manager and, and still at that time, which ha had the chance to, uh, the stream manager, the, to, uh, you're going to see him uh, meet a couple of times in Paris. And you can also see the Pictish motif decoration here, engraved on the bottle. So really gorgeous one. Uh, and uh, the cork is uh, is very nicely also decorated though i have to say it's starting to suffer but it's also my place so i gotta be uh, careful now this one contrarily to the next ones are caramel colored and chill filtered so it's a big difference for this 200 uh, 2007 and 8 releases uh, we're gonna see that that will change in time in the next ones now recipes american and european oak uh, with so ex bourbon and sherry butts uh, i wrote 10 but it's 11 years old right this one retailed at that time for uh, really 81 i can't believe that no 41 41 euros in 2010 
the date I bought it. Right, let's see what's going on with this one. No, I won't say it. <laughs> it's gonna be another one. So the timing. So this one is uh, light, lighter color. The legs are sticking way less, quickly disappearing. Not sure you can see them. Can suspect a higher rate of filtration there, probably at lower temperature. You know, we, we can go to chill filter under uh, under zero. Mm, can be of uh, around minus four, minus eight. Not sure, but it's a pity because you lose a lot of fat and congeners, as they say. Okay, on the nose. This one is more on the herbal, traditional herbal, floral, uh, a bit spicy side of Bel Blair. So it's a bit more austere. Now the bottle has been going a bit down. Um, well, not so much, in fact. But on the early notes, I wrote uh, heady flowers, some important esters. So pineapple, uh, pear, um, maybe exotic fruit, some, some sensation of uh, pear eau de vie, pear spirit, um, also some dried and fresh herbs, some ginger maybe, uh, some maybe grey pepper or light black pepper. Just a second. Right, sorry. Yeah, so lovely, charming nose, but in some ways coming across a more natural or more developed than the elements. But in other ways, let's reach more naked. Let's see on the palette. Mm. Yeah, typical Balbrea. I mean, this is something, well, Sometimes some teeny nicks, which is also on the Highlands, can be mistaken with this. But again, like Kleinlich, but Kleinlich has a waxy side, so it's different. There's something that's northern, high, shouts northern Highlands, but less austere in this distillery than in some others, like teeny nick, which is more citric, more powerful, more spicy, usually. So beautiful, charming, maybe a bit weaker than the elements in terms of delivery, despite uh, the 3% more, I know. You can see the, there's a lot of paradox in whiskey. And Okay, another sip and then I will dilute it. Hmm. Well, it's still nice. At the beginning of the the bottle, I was disappointed. It was closed. It was a bit messy in terms of texture, a bit too melted. I, I wonder if there was done tons of caramel in it. And then it did get some air and get develop and get got rid of some maybe unwanted notes. But there was no flow. So yeah, indeed, I agree with my early notes some ester, moderate esters, um, yeah, some hint of coffee maybe, um, some ginger, um, some syrupy caramel, um, again some honeyed, heather honey, but also other kinds of honey, um, uh, one we say here that you can find for, uh, for food, for cooking and uh, uh, it's called toute fleur, all flowers, which gathers different kinds of flowers. So it's a bit of average of everything. So it's less typical than heather honey or chestnut honey, for instance. And also you have your Earl Grey um, with not too much bergamot in this one. Yeah, so charming, a bit limited in depth um, and in complexity, but still charming and quite nice um, but different from the uh, knowledge statement mm. Mm. yeah 
Mm, forgot to mention this is going higher now with some kind of residual sugar effect but there's also some powdered sugar sucre glace in french and some filling of pastry not really pastry of but top with uh, powdered sugar topping of, of pastries so maybe there's also some angelica as well as you can find in some old uh, older style of Glenmorangie that that's the common thing with the two distilleries by the way so it's overall a uh, quite nice one uh, let me check the rating just a second I'm gonna pause okay I'm gonna I'm gonna keep the 18 now nine of, out of 100 because uh, it's way more interesting than at the beginning I have to say uh, when I opened the bottle, the first five, six centiliters were disappointing. Right, so for this one, we saw it was an old packaging, but still uh, the, those vintages packaging for the 1999. Uh, so the label is there instead of being down once again. Quite slight change. But another change, except the size of the box, is the fact that there's magnets. And if you open it and you have to charge it from there, and uh, put that a bit like that because it's hard to go into. Uh, well, let me show you. So I have to do like this. Oops. And it goes there. So you can see it like this. On the left, oh, well, it will be easier if I take it off. Oops. On the left, you have John McDonald, which is the distillery manager, uh, who explains, uh, he gives his tasting notes and also presents uh, the distillery, the vintage series. Uh, and it continues there to speak about the source, uh, the or original source of the water used at the distillery, which is called Alt, again, sorry, uh, Alt Derg, the, the Alt Derg Burn, <laughs> hard to say. And you can see a black and white view of the warehouse and landscape. So, and also, yeah, of course, principal thing. If you do this, you can see the uh, almost the entire landscape uh, supposed to depict what's around there. Not sure I'm gonna read the the notes. Uh, it's yeah, it's marketing, but we'll see. Sorry for the noise of the chair. I couldn't find another solution as I had to quite turn. So this one, this is a 1999, this is the second release. One of the reasons I think they dropped the uh, vintage is, I guess, maybe because there was some confusion be between the releases and it was not necessarily, you see this one is not mentioned, for instance, as the second release. I had to look down uh, to have some, uh, to do some searches. Uh, this one is a 17, uh, said 16 or 17 years old, uh, so this still 1999, but till 2016. Oh yeah, it is said, uh, sorry, I, uh, it is said second release here. And what you can see that we might be pleased with is natural color, non-chill filtered. It wasn't the case before, and some bottlings for Germany I saw uh, of uh, previous releases were mentioned in caramel coloring so that's why I'm saying that um, the rest is uh, yeah, it's guidance stuff guidelines we don't but still it's, it's useful to see how many units of alcohol and how you should drink or not it's gonna be worse I'm telling you but uh, if you haven't seen my video about the call for new regulation for alcohol in UK and Scotland in particular you should watch it. Not many people are aware of that. I did participate to it. It was open to foreigners, so 
uh, there you go. Now the liquid, it's as, almost as clear as the previous one, so uh, pale yellow, all pale, not so pale. Let's say bright but not super brilliant. Now the legs, haha, -ha, what a surprise, they are sticking a bit more than the previous one. No chill filtering in there and also a decent age. Wow, I'm gonna be too long. If I explain again, I, I did that in another video, why etc. the chill filtering, the effects, so. Lovely nose, more on the citric side, this one, citrus fruit, more ahead on, on of the nose. Still some nice floral elements. Now it has also have been drunk a bit. It's not yet at the middle. These bottles are evolving. I didn't guess them. I didn't want to guess them. I don't know why it's, I mean, a cork seemed to be tight, so, but still there's some air missing, I know. Less spectacular nose, more on the citric, citrus side, less complex. Some vanilla, I forgot to mention the vanilla in all the two before. It's so, some notes, I'm sorry, are so obvious that sometimes I forgot to mention them. Apologies. So loads of vanilla in this one again. Uh, some vegetal element. Uh, some botanicals I cannot really put my fingers in on. Not much more on the nose, I'm afraid. What did I wrote? Yeah, herbal, floral, citrus fruit, uh, vanilla. Yeah. So we'll see what's going on on the palette with this one. The best is yet to come, let me tell you. Mm. Okay, better on the palette than on the nose but still focused on citrus fruit hint of hint of grapefruit two or three different lemons not really oranges not filling them um, maybe a squash of oranges on top of all those lemons not sure spices are moderate in this one at, at least now there was a bit spicier at the beginning. Um, in terms of spice, it's always turning between different kinds of peppers and of uh, uh, ginger. Um, Cask-wise, forgot to... Oh, I forgot to mention it. I guess it's American oak. Uh, let me check, sorry. Okay, so cask recipe, uh, American oak and Spanish sherry buds. Well, we don't know the proportions like for the previous one. So quite charming, but with a feeling of being drier, more spicy, a bit more oaky. Some tannins, but not so much. Some esters, but um, I forgot to mention quince. Uh, what is this? Oh uh, yeah, and yellow peach that maybe come across a bit more. We'll see with a, a few drops what's going on. Uh, delivering, uh, releasing more vanilla and citrus fruit and hint of coconut. Yeah, not super complex, um, drier, n still nice, but, um, well, I'm moderately seduced. Let me pause to recalculate the rating. Okay, so this one has lost two points, so it's now 89 out of 100. Now, it's a bit with the reservations because at my place things are not always evolving as I wanted to. 
it's a bit dry it's a bit hot so uh, if you have a cooler place to store your bottles it's probably evolving better so take my ratings with a pinch of salt but there you have it a 1999-2016 bottled now we're gonna go to this which is gorgeous and way more sherried as you can see so this one goes with this uh, colorful uh, orange and let's check oh it's the same decoration inside but you have this full orange combo <laughs> um, matured initially in american oak ex bourbon barrels followed by spanish oak ex sherry butts presented a natural color blah 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 so there you have it i love this orange and I love the succession of those three colors. Uh, the blue is a bit less. Mm, the three, the the green, the uh, orange, and uh, violet. I love that. This one has been open more recently. For this one, I need to thank because I had the chance to get the bottle through him, as he likes a lot. Bal Blair, uh, my pal Teddy KGB, aka Romain, which is French as well. Um, this guy knows uh, also about whiskey and uh, good stuff so if i compare the 1999 with this one you can see it's uh, darker uh, now also uh, this one is is uh, really 17 years old so uh, so it's yeah uh, distilled 2000 but all 2017 uh, second release for the geeks out there uh, and as you can see even if it doesn't say on the packaging and everywhere I looked for the proportions for me there's more sherry than the previous one and it's probably a 40 to 50 percent or more uh, percentage of cask which are sherried and heavily sherried if not I mean not seasoned <laughs> that's the difference now so yeah on the nose immediately you have the sherry but you still have some uh, because it's a finishing as i understand it still has some characteristics of balbra in terms of uh, floral fruitiness herbal spiciness but you can see the rich fruits raisins the chocolate the uh, hints of red fruits uh, some tannins you can feel on the nose already this one is a bit dry at the beginning but now it's getting better still i could still wait to review it and so take my notes with uh, rating especially with reservation i think it's going to evolve again um, so this was purchased around uh, 2021 for around 105 euros and um, might retail more now um, yeah that's what I, I forgot to mention the tannicity i feel there i think is related to the fact it's spanish oak it's european oak it's not american oak. so there's more tannins it's more uh, fir firm oak uh, and also as it is uh, even if it's maybe a few years of uh, finishing or a second maturation it is not as sweet as uh, some american oak ones if i may say so yeah rich rich fruity dark fruits all kinds of um, dark and some red fruits as well okay let's go on the palette yeah cherries of course Hmm. Ooh, hoo, hoo. 
Yeah. This one is something else. The end of the palette is warming with spices, but it, it stays, it's not chili pepper, it's pepper. And maybe some five berries pepper, so hint of acidulous pepper. But the beginning is all fruits and also some tannins. Some there's a structure in this one, more structure than in the previous one. Um, there's some chocolate, dark chocolate coming on, then some uh, some cherries soaked in in, in uh, maraschino or maybe a bit of armagnac dropped in there, I don't know, or cognac, uh, Grand, Champa Grand Champagne maybe. There's something that's going to the French territory a bit, despite its Spanish oak finishing. Um, there's some honey again there, there's some... All the ochre fruit I was filling before with the previous version are now there, but as if they were a bit uh, not overripe, but a bit more mature fruits. Um, maybe also some sensation of marmalade, but not bitter marmalade. Uh, so this one is more powerful for sure. Uh, the beginning I forgot to mention is f there's some fatness, but it quickly becomes drier. Oiliness becomes drier. Uh, yeah, hints of, I uh, forgot to mention, hazelnuts, uh, heady flowers, bergamot, all grey tea, hint of coffee, some tobacco, uh, vanilla, yeah, but it's subdued compared to the other, peach, orange, apricot, uh, uh, dried raisins, that's what I, I wrote, uh, and yeah, I had the honey this time. So with this one, we're getting closer to, say, for instance, Highland Park 21 years old, minus the smoke. Yeah, this is beautifully complex, beautifully sherry. This is lovely. Mm. And super elegant, forgot to mention. I'm going to open it, but it's a bit of pity in that case. Uh, just a second. You have been too generous in my glass for this one. Five drums is quite something. So that's why um, I did pour back a few of it. Yeah, it might surprise you, but I have to be careful. Um, pour back some whiskey in the, in the, in the bottle. It was not easy to photography, so that's why I also, and also to highlight the previous colorful range, that's why I put it the two on the thumbnail, the bottles and the boxes. Just two drops, because when you have sherry cask, you have to be very careful with water. There's something that's louder in the oak now, and that's going a bit to the bourbon territory. Bourbon whiskey, straight bourbon, I mean. Very seductive. There's almost something as rich. Bourbon, maybe even rummish. There's something that's close to my, uh, I see the bottle there, um, to the my four square nobiliary there which is appealing. Ooh, rich sugar, demerra sugar. Very disturbing <laughs> when I think of the other, which is also, I have to say, my four square is one of the m closest to whiskey rum I ever tried, and to old, 20 years old bourbons, stuff like that, insane. This is also bordering uh, US whiskeys. But for the best, this is super charming. There's some heady flowers again. The vanilla on the background, I have to say for this one, is a pastry vanilla. So you have your sugar, your uh, powdered sugar, uh, sucre glace in French, uh, on your millefeuille, a thousand sheets or a thousand leaves pastry. There's something of that 
which prevent this whiskey to be too oaky, too bitter and too tannic. It's that pastry side and that's the richness also of Bal Blair, I have to say, sometimes. Hmm, okay. Well, this is less complex, but a few drops enhances the oaky notes, noble oak notes, let's say. Uh, but the nose is superior to the palate if you put a few drops. But beautiful, beautiful stuff. Gonna look at my rating, see if I change it. Just a second. It final final rating for this one is 92.5 out of 100 no less it's my system of scoring uh, you have again the possibility to check it out uh, uh, and to see the comparison i make with others in my website so there's an entry called rate no notation uh, scoring system and now ladies and gentlemen we're gonna go to the last whiskey, which is the one I awarded as one of the whiskeys of the year, top three in 2018. It's a 2018 release of uh, Distilled 1991. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's a 27 years old Bal Blair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this comes with a beautiful yellow uh, violet sorry if you like violet otherwise c'est pas grave tant pis pour vous <laughs> in french beautiful again this magnet uh, and it shouts natural color non chill filtered uh, stunning stuff American oak, ex bourbon, Spanish oak bats. So you see, it's the same recipe for almost for the three, except the proportions vary. vary. So, just a second. I know it's a long video, but there are timestamps. Just a second for this about the pricing. Pricing of this, when it was out in 2018, it was sold. 167 euros in france while the equivalent at the whiskey exchange of mustard or melt i think was 134 euros how is this possible you greedy maison de whiskey mm. i had to mention that i don't like the difference it's a shame now to be honest and i'm gonna say something about how i did had this bottle which is miraculous but for those who had to buy this bottle and complain about the price even here including me 167 let me tell you that in 2018 with the starting of shortage of old cask in scotland and since 2015 the the big shortage of uh, cask in Japanese uh, four main distilleries uh, prices have started to gone crazy at the even at 2015 and for me I completely understand that they did change the price that they could have changed the price on this one and to be honest completely honest with you 134 even more and 167 for a 27 years old bottle that 46 percent is underestimated was underestimated this is typically the bottle that could be sold at 250 not much more but so this was a bargain at that time and i'm sorry i don't have a backup bottle glad for you td kgb you have some uh and um problem is though that said is that when they rebranded everything in 2007 did i say that? no 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 uh yeah when no no when they took over uh they they rebranded everything with the grayish ugly uh, 
Maybe I will buy it at some point, but I have to try them first. New range with this statement is launched 2019. Thank you, Maltus Book. When they did rebrand this in 2019, it was not 167, it was not 250, but over 500, uh, if not 607, uh, 70 here. So uh, multiplied by four prices. So this on, in the other side of uh, in the country is unfair. So I'm shocked and uh, I'm also happy to have had this opportunity to have this, especially because I didn't pay it. And no, the distri didn't offer me uh, the bottle either. So what did happen? I played, at that time it was allowed to ship uh, Master of Malt Whiskey Exchange. It's related to Brexit, but not only. They were allowed to ship to France. So what happened? Every year they were doing their uh, giveaway operation, uh, commercial, of course, because it's, we speak of, of them. Uh, you could choose during a month or more uh, a bottle of whiskey you like in their catalog of Master or Malt and play on the website online, Ask Whiskey Santa. So what did I do? Because I do, I did love this bottle. I tried uh, at the distillery and on the whiskey show. I did ask for this every day, every single day, the same whiskey. Sometimes I ask others. And by rotation, by I don't know what miracle, I finally uh, managed to get this free at my door. Yeah. So <laughs> there you have it. And by chance, it become my whiskey of the year 2018. How cool is that? One of the three, I think one was a lot 40 cast strength. The other one, I don't remember now. Okay, so let's see what's all the fuss about this with an intermediary color between the 2000, which is darker, and the 1999 and the others, which are lighter. So, so deep gold. Um, do I have something? But even the lighting, I mean, it's tricky. So yeah, so deep gold. So you can feel some age, but no uh, domination of uh, uh, sherry cask if they're not first feel. The legs, they're fucking sticking on the glass. Even if there are some tears, but it's beautiful. I don't know if you can see that. I'm not sure at all. Right, let's get on the nose. This one, uh, normally, I would say, deserved 15 minutes in the glass. It's one hour now, but it was capped. Uh, so I'm just moving the glass. <laughs> Not exactly uh, uh, the anaconda move from foot quick, I made, but something like to oxygen it a bit. But yeah, Slangeva to all whiskey lovers and of this distillery in particular. The nose is gorgeously fruity. This is the orchid fruit uh, combo just shouts out of the glass and also all myriads of things, tea. Uh, Earl Grey tea, black tea, hint of green tea, uh, Russian tea, if you like. Oh, heady flowers. Some sandalwood as well. The nose is exceptional, and let me tell you, the palette as well. Did I wrote something else? This is beautiful. There's almost a feeling of patchouli. Uh, this is super complex. There's also some feeling of borderies and borderie and Grand Champagne cognac in there. Old cognac, and believe me, I did try some very old ones, way older than this. Stunning nose, completely. Uh, I mean, taking you over. Uh, you cannot. Uh, you cannot fight against this. You just had to fall under it, its spell. 
and surrender. <laughs> I could I could nose this for half an hour, but it's a whiskey review on video. So let's go on the palette for this last and exceptional drum, my friends. All of the above, I said, in sweet harmony, with a serenity, with age, which is oh, lifting you in the sky. I mean, this is so beautiful, beautifully complex. Everything is melted with age. The balance is exceptional, let me tell you. The expressivity is high. Um, yeah, symphony of, of, save, of flavors, I wrote. Sublime, heady flowers ahead, then orchid fruits, then um, tea of all kinds, uh, some old cognac notes some almost rancho but not really um some mm, hmm. licorice not sure let me try it again mm. yes m the most beautiful had the honey um, most beautiful tea. The most refined peach, apricot, orange. Um, most beautiful apple pie, quince pie. Hints of prune raisins. Flower, flower wise, some lilac maybe a hint of lily in the valley violet i'm not sure um sandalwood i said already slight uh dried herbs of all kinds um i mean it's a field with everything growing on the side of the road Hints of paliné as well, but it's very tiny. Hints of hazelnut, it's very tiny. Um, the complexity, hints of tobacco. Complexity in this is insane. Then I put a few drops, then conclude uh, this show, if I may say. It's a tribute to Chris Goodrum when he says welcome to the show, this episode of the show. <laughs> Take some water. You know, this kind of bottle I don't open often, I don't drink often myself. It's kind of open bottles to open when you have a good friend who enjoys this, who's able to enjoy this in his experience. The few drops you have some less heady and less uh, um, sexy notes, hints of geranium coming in, but still plainly uh, bearable and nice. It's not like some young Ochantoshan, uh, which has a terrible uh, no, uh, odor and flavor of geranium. The 12, I uh, hate the 12, for instance. <laughs> Yeah, so super complex, there's some powdered sugar, vanilla on top of pastry, I forgot to mention again. I mean, this is pure poetry. 
Oh, this is wonderful. Um, I have to pause to correct the score, but it's not going to be easy. Let me tell you. I'll be back. All right, this rating, which includes uh, the subjective note out of 20, that is why sometimes it's higher than others. So, like I said always, if you're relying on, for instance, Serge Valentin, who had tried way more whiskies than me, maybe 20,000 or so, while I had tried only 4,000 and so, it doesn't add these subjective notes, so you have to minor my rating by four or six points, just to let you know. But for me, uh, and uh, I have the nose, the palate in three different stages, the attack, uh, the arrival if you like, the middle and the finish. Then I have balance, complexity and finesse, generosity and intensity. Uh, development of the flavors with air and water or or one of the other and subjective notes and with all these you obtain a, a rating out of 100 and let me tell you that for balance complexity the rating is 10 out of 10 uh, for the nose uh, 9.75 for the palette it's 9.5 for every stage Generosity is 9, because it's quite old and it is not 10, but I mean 9. Uh, water development with air, etc., 9.5, and, and subjective no note is 19 out of 20. So the total is 96.5 out of 100. And yes, it's one of my top 3 top, uh, Whiskey of the Year 2018. And value at that time, and value, uh, let me tell you, if you manage to get this for 200 euros, value is very high. Uh, let me check. It's long, but who cares? Okay, let me tell you, let me tell you how much it retails if I see on whiskey base. This is crazy because you mean, I mean the 25 years old, so two years less is over five, six hundred euros. And I see addresses in, uh, where is this, in, Ch in uh, Russia, uh, where is this, yeah, it will be difficult in Russia, Czechia, or uh, in Scotland. I mean you have 285 euros in Czechia you have 299 pounds, it's pounds, so if you're in Europe. Uh, Germany, I see some 329 euros. I mean, I don't want to push you to uh, spend too much money, but still at 300 euros, if you have the money, this is still worth buying. If you do so, let me know your thoughts under the video. And even if you have it already or just tried it, le le uh, just please tell me on the on the comment section. Have you tried the core range, uh, the vintage core range? Have you tried the current core range? What are your thoughts about Bal Blair? Uh, what are your thoughts about the bottles I'm covering today? And what is for you the best, for instance, new core range expression, affordable, please. <laughs> I think it will help a lot of people. But for now, you had my opinion about all those. And this one, yeah, Mwah. kiss of approval. Or, okay, slap for Jeff. Bye-bye. <laughs>